Many people have been saying that they don't know how to use the M32 edit app, it confuses them, and understandably so, especially on PC, it's very different from the Mixer interface. I think the Mac OS app is closer to what the Mixer looks like. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a matrix, set up a matrix in the M32 edit app and also in the Mixing Station app. Now, I already made a whole video about matrices, I'll link it up here in the corner, but in short, what a matrix is, I'll go to here bus matrix this page a matrix is a bus for buses you send buses to it because you cannot send a bus to another bus and you can only send buses you cannot send any aux channels or effects channels or any of the normal channels to a matrix only buses by the way i'm talking into a microphone and that microphone is going into channel one so you can see a signal while we are doing stuff i'll select a matrix and the first way you can send a bus to a matrix is very obvious on the mixer tab it's right here so above each and every bus you have a matrix send i can do this and and slide it like that and I am now sending bus number one to matrix number one if I want to send bus number one to matrix number two I can go here and do like so and this is a very quick overview of which buses are going to which matrices now of course there's another way to do it go to the send tab and instead of selecting the matrix you're gonna select a bus and right here when you're selecting a bus you can see to which matrices it's going if you select a channel you can see to which bus it's going if you select a bus, you see to which matrix it's going. And these buttons on off decide if the signal of that bus is going to the matrix or not, regardless of the send level. This is how much you're sending the bus to the matrix. This button is to say whether it's going to the matrix or it's not going to the matrix at all. Since we cannot send a channel to a matrix, let me real quick send my microphone channel to a bus first. So I'm gonna click on bus one right here. And now I have sends on faders and I'm gonna send my microphone to bus number one and get out of sends on faders go back to the matrix page and now i have signal on bus number one i'll lift it up if i send bus number one to the matrix one you can see i have signal on matrix one now if you noticed i had to raise the fader of the bus in order to get signal into the matrix because if it's all the way down there's no signal on the matrix why is that it's because of these tap points so i'm on the bus i'm selecting the bus on the sends page right here the same page that I'm sending the bus to the matrix. Now it's set to post fader, which most of the cases you will have it on post fader. But just in case, I don't want the fader level of the bus to affect the level of the send to the matrix. I can set it to pre fader. And now you can see I have signal on the matrix, although the bus fader is all the way down. The fader of the bus does not affect now the level that is going into the matrix. And that is important because maybe you are using these buses to send them somewhere to some speaker and you want to control the level of that speaker through these faders but you don't want that to affect the level that is going to the matrix that is going elsewhere so you can use a pre-fader tab and that fader will be independent from the level that is going to the matrix you can also use post eq pre eq input and these basically change between if you have eq on the bus a pre-eq send will disregard that eq that is on the bus if the compressor is after the eq it will also disregard the compressor if you have the compressor before the eq and you do pre-eq on the tap right here then what happens you take the signal after the compressor and if you don't want any of the eq or compression you're gonna set it to input whatever is getting into the bus will go to the matrix so this button decides if the bus is going to the matrix or not regardless of the send level so i'll turn it off I have nothing right here i'll go to the main left right send it to the matrix we have signal i'll turn it off now i'll go to the mono center bus and i'll select it and i'll turn it up there's nothing because i'm not sending anything to it yet so i'm gonna send my channel to the mono center bus and raise the fader of that bus and also turn it on because it was not assigned to it. By default, no channel is assigned to the mono center bus. As you can see, now this is the mono center bus going into the matrix. I'll turn it off. We don't have anything, turn it on, okay? So this is how you send buses 
to a matrix. Let me get out of the mono center bus. Now you still have to assign the outputs of the matrices to physical outputs to plug them into actual speaker. So let's just real quick send the main left right to matrix one, two. I will go to the matrix page and link matrix one to matrix two stereo link. Yes. Now this is one stereo pair and I will go to the send page, select the main left right and send it at zero to that matrix. So now whatever I do on the main left right going to matrix one, two, let's select the mono center bus and send it to matrix three also at zero and remove it from matrix one, two that you already did before. Now the mono center bus is going to matrix three and the main left right is going to matrix one and two. So let me name these main left main right sub. To send them to physical outputs, I'll go to the routing page out 1 to 16. By default, the main left right is on output 15 and 16, but we don't want to send the main left right directly to the outputs. We want to send the matrix because the main left right is going to the matrix and the matrix will go to the output. So I will go here and set output 15 to matrix 1, output 16 to matrix 2. So that's the main left and that's the main right. And I will set output 14 to matrix 3. So on the physical XLR output number 14, we have the matrix number 3 that has the mono center box. Us. And on physical XLR outputs 15 and 16, you have matrix one and two that have the main left right. Now you can see these bubbles have colors, these circles, and that is the tap point for the outputs. And these tap points are very different from these tap points because these decide what is the tap for the signal that is going out of the bus into the matrix. So these decide what kind of processing exists on the signal that is coming from the bus. However, these right here decide what is the signal that is going out of the matrix. I'm on this matrix. If I go to EQ, I'll do some EQ right here and I'll do some compression. I have now processing on the matrix. These circles decide if the EQ and compression compression and effects that are on the matrix will go out of the output or not. By default, it's post fader. So everything you're doing on the matrix, EQ compression, insert, fader level, everything you're doing is going out of the output. It's taking effect. However, I can decide that maybe I don't want the fader of the matrix to affect the actual signal that is going out of the output. I can right click on it and decide it's pre fader or I can do it pre-fader plus mute. If it's plus mute, when I hit mute on the matrix, it will actually mute the output. If it's only pre-fader without plus mute, then this mute doesn't matter. The signal will still go out of the output. And you also have all of these. So whatever is coming from the bus into the matrix, pre-EQ, pre-EQ plus mute, post-EQ plus mute, pre-fader, post-fader. Most cases, you will keep it on post-fader. Now we're not done yet because these are still virtual outputs. These are not directly connected to a physical XLR output. So you have to go to the AS50 page and make sure that the outputs of the AS50 are taking their information from the out page. So outputs 1 to 16 of the AS50A, because I'm using AS50A right here, are getting their information from the out page, which is this page that we were on. Previously. Okay, just check on that. By default, the out 1 to 16 will be on AS50A and AS50B and the local XLR outputs if you're using the big console. So you don't have to worry about that. But in case you're not getting signal, maybe someone changed settings here. Now on the mixing station app, it's a little bit easier to navigate because what you can do is that you can click here and select the matrix. Now what we have here is because we already did this on the M32 edit app, the app is taking the information from the mixer. That's why they are already named and there is already signal going to them. So I'll select the matrix and then click sends on fader. Now you don't see anything here. Why? Because you cannot send a channel to a matrix. Same thing on the other layer. Same thing for the aux and the effect returns because they are channels. You don't see them. Go to the mix, which is the buses. You can see them. You can send these to the matrix. You want to send them to another matrix. Click right here. Select another matrix. Here you go you can send them to another matrix. And you can also go to the matrix slash main and you'll not see any matrices because of course you cannot send one matrix to another matrix, but you will see the main left right and the mono center bus. So you can send these like so. If you want to send another matrix, you click right here, you select another matrix and you do so. Then you get out of the sends on failures mode, you're back to normal. You're mixing normally. There's also a different way to send stuff to a matrix and that is by going into the actual bus. I'm gonna click on the bus name right here and in the overview you can directly send like so 
to matrices. So now I'm sending bus number one to matrix number six to matrix number five for that way. Or you can click on the tab for this hands and you can send them that way. And that mute button right here is the same as this on and off button on the sends page. If I click this button, it's the same as muting and unmuting with this button. And you can change the tap point for the signal that is going into the matrix from here. And if you noticed, each two go together. So if I set prefader to matrix number three, it will also be prefader to matrix number four. So each odd and even next to each other. So one, two, and three, four, and five, six are pairs when it comes to the tap point. And this is the tap point for the bus. So whatever is coming out of the bus into the matrix. These right here are these right here, these tap points. There's also one more thing. You can go back. Instead of going into the bus, you can go into the actual matrix itself. So I'll click on the sub matrix right here. And if you go to the assignment tab, you can see which buses are assigned to that matrix. And assigned means which buses are turned on with this button. So when you select the bus and you turn it on or off, this is assigning it to the matrix. Instead of going into each bus and see if it's assigned to the matrix or or not, you can go into the matrix itself and go into the assignment tab and quickly see which buses are assigned to it. You can deselect them, you can select them. And if you press and hold, then swipe, you can select or deselect very quickly. Press and hold, swipe like so. Now for the routing, you will go up here into the up and down arrows, click on it, and then click on output routing. And this is the outputs page, which is this exact page right here that says out one to 16. So this page is the same page right here that says outputs. And I'll go all the way down. Output 14 should be matrix number three, which is the sub. That's correct. Output 15 should be matrix one, which we call main left. And output 16 should be matrix two, which we call main right. That's correct. And the tap points for these matrices is right here. This is the tap point for the signal that is going out of the matrix. I'll keep it on post fader. And if you want to check the actual physical connections, you can go to the AS50A page or B page, depending on where you plugged your stage box into. And you can make sure that outputs 1 to 16 right here are assigned to out 1 to 16, which is from this page. That's correct. Cool, that's it. If there's anything else that you want me to show you how to do on the Mixing Station app or on the M32 Edit app, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, make sure to like this video and I'll see you in the next one.